Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today um we're gonna go through this very big question on do you really need 10 Gbps internet in Singapore at least for the time at the time of uh, recording. So let's break it down if you really need the 10 Gbps internet. Okay, first um before you even think about upgrading, you have to think about whether it's even worth the upgrade before we proceed right so the first thing to think about is cost and we all know that 10 gbps is slightly more expensive than 3 gbps so things to note uh whether you are going to go with future proofing because as technology improves having 10 gbps will likely future proof your devices for a longer period of time as compared to 3 gbps and also um, the next point is planning whether your house your devices are all ready for 10 gbps upgrade and whether you need to update your devices and also to think about whether uh, the 10 gbps is a uh, hype versus a reality where you actually need the upgrade so first thing we have to think about is uh, when you throw things around like gbps and all these things right what does it actually mean so a simple way to calculate that is that 8 bits is equals to one byte so bits and byte are different so the first thing you have to take note is this difference and therefore one gigabit per second is not equals to one gigabyte per second right so likely you have to divide it by eight so here i have done some like basic calculation just divide by eight you get approximately one gigabit per second you will give you the speed of 125 megabyte per second download speeds usually I mean that's the theoretical maximum so usually it will be lesser about 80 to 90 percent of these speeds you see here so for 10 gbps it is about 1.25 gig per second or 1250 megabytes per second and for 3 gbps it will be about 375 megabytes per second so yeah so this is just to demystify bits bytes and all this um i guess marketing jargon sometimes they just throw you this 10 gbps it sounds nicer right so for basic uh speed comparison you can see that the difference between 10 gbps and 3 gbps typical games nowadays are about like 100 gigs or so the download speed will be for 10 GB gbps about 1.5 minutes and then for 3 gbps it will be about three times more so it's like four and a half minutes for a 25 gig a 4k video project upload it could be for school it could be for like youtube and stuff like that a 10 gbps upload will take about 20 seconds and then for 3 gbps also you see a pattern here is about three times more about one minute so for 500 gigs of let's say you're a professional videographer you have a 500 gigs of 8k footage file you want to upload or download so for 10 gbps internet speed you'll get about seven minutes but for 3 gbps you get about 20 20 to 23 minutes depending so here is where you will see the most difference for uh, having a 10 gbps so if you're working on videos professionally this will save you a lot of time like it's literally three times more so yeah if this is for your livelihood maybe you need to think about it so for cost, we have to see um, whether these devices are within your budget to upgrade. So because I think most of your devices are supporting one gigabit, you would likely have to upgrade your either your router, your switches, your adapters to this kind of multi gigabit tier. For 10 Gbps, you can see that a router that supports 10 Gbps usually costs the most basic is also about five hundred dollars, and then if if you want to go to like very high tier, it could get a thousand dollars or even more. But for three Gbps, we are looking at about two hundred to five hundred dollar range. Um, you can get a two point five Gbps router nowadays for these prices. The next one is your network card or adapters, because most of your devices don't come built in, right? So let's say for your PC, if you are plugging in your Ethernet cable now. Um, likely it's about I think 2.5 gigabit or even 1 gigabit so if you want to upgrade to uh, maybe allow for 10 gbps internet you would probably buy a new network card which is around 100 to 200 dollars and then for if you want to upgrade to 2.5 gigabit for 3 gbps internet you'll need about 50 dollars and keep in mind that this is for each device so if you have multiple devices uh, let's say multiple pcs you need to like multiply this accordingly and also for switches i think uh, 
one example is like my current switch is for one gigabit internet it can't support um, this kind of multi gigabit speeds so i would have to upgrade it in the future for 10 gbps the, the switches that support these speeds are usually on a higher range about 200 to 500 dollars but for 3 gbps you can see that it's about 80 ish to 200 dollars for better switches so if you think about it like just looking at this table whatever is in 10 gbps the devices in the 10 gbps internet range is about two times more than the 3 gbps range so uh, something to take note when you're budgeting for your devices so one of the more commonly misunderstood notions of needing a 10 gbps internet is that you need it for gaming to reduce the lag or ping or delay for the game so what ping measures um, in layman terms is what we call latency which is the distance to the actual server from your pc or game console or whatever right so um there is actually minimal difference between 10 gbps and 3 gbps broadband speeds it doesn't really affect the latency because latency is the distance right so having a bigger bandwidth doesn't really help with that so if you have um high ping usually it's likely due to router placements maybe your network is very congested your network is misconfigured or if you're playing on a very very fast server uh, these are the common games that's played in singapore and the typical server locations that singaporeans play as well so for valorant league of legends or dota 2 the server location is in singapore and usually if you get uh, everything is configured properly you will get about 5 to 15 milliseconds of ping in these games so the next game is um, PUBG or um, Apex Legends that was, there's also another server location in Singapore as well usually the ping is between 10 to 25 milliseconds World of Warcraft will usually get you about 80 to 150 milliseconds of ping and another, mo another popular server that World of Warcraft players play in is the North America server in which you will get about 100 to 250 milliseconds of ping depending on your network and devices and all that stuff so another commonly misunderstood um, notion is the idea that once you get a 10 gbps plan all the devices at home will instantly run at 10 gbps speed so this is very wrong as uh, if you have watched my previous video on me upgrading my network from 1 gbps to the Zen Y5 BT8 which supports 2.5 gbps right we know for a fact that there are bottlenecks and just plainly upgrading to a 10 gbps plan will not allow all the devices to run at that speed very few consumer devices nowadays have 10 gigabit ethernet ports so if you take a look at maybe your laptop pc they do not really have uh, usually they do not have a 10 gigabit ethernet ports so you would have to buy an adapter or something that allows the device to have 10 gbps speeds so this is something you have to take note if you want to get a 10 gbps plan it doesn't make sense if you buy a 10 gbps plan and then all your devices can only run at 1 g one gbps speed so you're just wasting money you're just throwing away money at this point the other one the other point is about uh, wi-fi limitations so if you have a 10 gbps plan your devices that uses wi-fi will likely work at a fraction of that speed because real world there's interference there's distance between um, your device to the router and there are also whether the fact that your device can have 10 gbps capabilities even with the existing wi-fi 7 you may not even hit the theoretical i mean you will likely not even hit the theoretical speeds and you're just moving at a fraction of 10 gps speed another point that ties in with the device bottlenecks is that you will have to upgrade your home network infrastructure which costs a lot of money for example you need a 10 gigabit ready router you need ethernet cables if you're using like maybe cat 5 cables you need to upgrade it because it doesn't carry that speed you need to you may need to upgrade your switches if any if you have a network switch like me um, you may have to upgrade also your wireless access points to use maybe Wi-Fi 7 or something like that to 
fully utilize these speeds that you have. So when do you actually need 10 Gbps? Uh, in my opinion, uh, 3 Gbps is already good enough for majority of Singaporeans. You need 10 Gbps. So, so if you really need 10 Gbps, I feel you will have to deal with professional content creation. So people like YouTubers, uh, videographers, maybe even if I would say photographers, which deal with like all the raw data, you would likely need a lot of bandwidth to upload and download your content, your files and all that stuff to work. So if you are among these people, you are dealing with files that are 500 gigabytes, you are dealing with one terabyte data. Yes, I, I, I think you need 10 Gbps just to make your life uh, easier or just to streamline your work. So the other one, the other group of people who would need the 10 Gbps internet is also for people who wants to, who likes to tinker around and have their own, their own home server and uh, basically a network lab for them to do like tinkering and like deal with different um, configurations and all that stuff to optimize their network at home. So these people usually have like, um, they do data backups, they do um, RAID servers, they do, um, they like a uh, network access storage to backup, upload things, upload media, download files, all that stuff. If you need those, probably you can think about 10 Gbps. For those people who work with smaller home servers, you probably don't need it. You don't need this uh, 10 Gbps because you're uploading maybe a 10 gigabyte file which probably takes you a few seconds difference from a 10 Gbps internet. So I don't think you need it. Also, uh, one thing you have to note the difference between uh, whether your local speed or whether it's internet speed. So what I mean by that is if you're transferring from one PC to another uh, locally, you don't need internet. You need to care about your intranet uh, local area bandwidth instead. So if your devices all are 10 Gbps ready, but you only have a 1 Gbps internet speed, you likely don't need, even need to care about the 1 Gbps internet speed. You can still transfer at 10 Gbps if your devices locally allows for that. So something to note. So another group of people who actually uh, who need this 10 Gbps internet speed are, I guess, tech enthusiasts who wants to have the early adoption of the new technology, the new shiny things. Yeah, basically new technology to maybe write about it, to blog about it, to create um, content about it. And these people usually, uh, for them, budget is not of the their primary concern because they like the tech, right? They like, like uh, network technology, so they want to get their hands on it. So for me personally, uh, am I upgrading to 10 Gbps? You guys know that I just upgraded to 3 Gbps. So whether I am upgrading to 10 Gbps would be not within the next year. So I feel that uh, right now there's no need to because um, gaming, media, streaming like Netflix, YouTube, all this, um, 3 Gbps speed is already more than enough. So I will only upgrade, I feel, when that I feel laggy in watching Netflix, for example. Like I need to wait, like maybe every two minutes I will buffer for Netflix, then I will upgrade. So for this, I don't think it will be a need until maybe two to three more years when things get um, higher quality, maybe not even 8K, maybe it's 16K in the future, who knows. Um, yeah, so I think it's, I feel that it will be about two to three more years, maybe 2028-ish, 20, near 2030, I feel. And I put a point here where if you search for this article, Singapore is pushing, the IMDA is actually pushing for upgrading to 10G nationwide broadband plan. Uh, I think you can go read about it. But they are planning to get it done likely 2028 to 2030. I feel this is pure speculation that devices, price plans will all come down to support this plan. I feel. Yeah, that which brings me to the ne next point. I will also upgrade it when the overall cost comes down. Because right now, 10G ready devices are still very expensive. They are considered new in the for consumer tech and therefore these are still very expensive. So I'm saying across every devices like network cards, adapters, switches, and all this stuff, if you want to upgrade your entire household to be 10G ready, it's not cheap. And so I will only upgrade when the budget makes sense. So if you want to keep, uh, keep a lookout on when I'm upgrading my internet, 
um, maybe keep a lookout for our updates. Maybe if a new video, maybe there's a 25 Gbps internet in the future. Who knows? Then maybe I will upgrade to that. And uh, yeah, but ultimately I will upgrade only when the budget makes sense. Uh, right now it doesn't really make sense to me for my use case so therefore i'm not upgrading at this time period thanks for watching and uh, that's all for my short presentation i hope everyone understand 10g and 3g better now and yeah see you in the next video bye